hey y'all what's up welcome back to the vlog so y'all we are about to talk about review discuss recap okay power book two ghost all right so listen don't judge me but i've already been drinking it's midday okay i'm getting this vlog in it's midday but like after watching that you gotta have a drink because that's sh it's just hilarious at this point like quit playing with me like i i don't know what to think of this season after watching this episode what do y'all think like it's kind of getting like real interesting and then then again it's just like what the heck like <laughs> this little boy is a real sociopath like y'all i got my curtains open because I'm trying to find some lighting, but I've just noticed that the tree right in front of my house, the leaves have changed. Yes, y'all, fall is here. So if y'all wanna know what I'm drinking, make sure you watch my last vlog where I took y'all shopping with me and y'all got to see it is a Cabernet, Cabernet. But yeah, y'all. So, um, yeah, like the title of the video says, everybody's gay. Like, they didn't make everybody gay in this season, basically, okay? So, let's start from the beginning, y'all. So, Simon's gay. So, we meet Simon's husband, Simon Stern's husband, okay? Let me do a little bit of talking before I just sit up here and drink this whole glass of wine and start acting stupid. So, Simon is gay. And we meet his husband. And it's so weird because I wasn't even shocked that Simon was gay because Simon is like, he's older, he's mature. I wasn't even shocked that he had a young husband. Like, y'all. <laughs> y'all, I'm getting ready to go to a yoga class after this. Like, I'm getting lit. Then I'm going to stretch. <laughs> going to get stretched out. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm coming home. <laughs> Because I'm single, y'all. I'm single, single. But that's neither here nor there, okay? This wine just be having me like... Okay, let's get into the um, recap. So, yes, Simon is gay. And like I said, I wasn't even surprised that he was gay because he's just like... Si and then he was married to a, a younger man because Simon is like the type of person... He's mature now, so he's taking calculated risks. And he's like, he kind of reminds me of myself. Like, I'm the type of person that's like, I'll get into a situation and I won't have too many expectations. I'll just sit back and chill and I'm going to have a good time while it lasts. Like, let's just have a good time while it lasts, you know? Like, I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to be in the moment. I'm going to be present here while this is going on until it's over with and i feel like that's what simon is doing with this young guy because this young guy is just already not listening to simon he's making deals with Tariq behind simon's back you think simon doesn't know that this guy is like that before he married him yes he knew that you know but it's fun it's interesting you know let's see how this turns out you know like whatever we'll see so yeah and then in the next Scene, you see Tasha calls Tariq and is like, you need to get a piece, Tariq. You need to get a piece. And I was just like, I'm so over her this season, y'all. I am, I don't even want to see her no more this season unless she is getting dressed to go to court. Like, I don't want to see her with those braids no more this season. I am over it, y'all. Like, those braids are just horrible. Her acting this season. Like, I rewatched season one through six before this season and to be honest her acting was never that good like she's just i don't know it's something about her like she's just so short and little i just don't i don't i'm not here for it y'all i'm no longer here for tasha i don't know if i ever was here for tasha especially when she slept with that um with the with the lawyer his light skin goofy ass. I was like, ugh, you slept you got to sleep with him? Ugh. But y'all I'm just over it. So next we get to Professor Milgram. So she's jealous that Dabari took down his graduate student. And she was side eyeing him when he um 
when Lauren invited him over, y'all. So Lauren invited him over to have dinner with her and her parents. What? I don't even know what Lauren's angle was. Like, was Lauren, like, flirting with him? Did she think that if she flirted a little bit with Jabari, you know, warmed up to him? Because Lauren might know that he sleeps with his students. So I was like, maybe Lauren was trying to offer a little bit of the good stuff so she can graduate the good stuff. <laughs> Maybe Lauren was trying to, you know what I'm saying? Give him some of that wop and see um, if she could get that and be a shoe in for that position to go to Washington and, you know, and ultimately graduate early from um, Stansfield. But yeah, I didn't, I was like, why is she flirt? I was wondering why Lauren was flirting with Jabari. And she, you know, she never was she side eyed Tariq. I was like, she trying to do, she trying to get it in with Jabari. She, either try to blackmail him or something because she is not this innocent girl. I'm pretty sure she's not, y'all. It's something about her. I haven't figured it out yet, but something about her just is not right. And her parents are shady as hell. So, you know, you know it's in her. But, yeah, y'all. And um, so in the next scene, Monet and Kane confront the JTD boys. And it was just like so cringe that scene i was just cringing when uh monet was like k like you when you speak spanish it just when she said k it just didn't it didn't sound like a what you know like what what you say it didn't sound like that it just sound like what what like i don't know the infliction wasn't there it wasn't like k like k pasta now what what was that what's up you know like i just didn't feel that k like it just i'm not even saying it the way that i feel like it should have been said but like y'all if y'all feel me y'all feel me when she said what when he called it with uh whatever his name called her a bitch or bonta uh and then even when he called her a bonta like it just did not sound authentic it didn't sound like he was an, an actual spanish speaker like he spoke I don't know that whole scene was just cringe and then you know at the end she was telling um Kane that she could always depend on him and I was like here she go again with this mind control and I was like you know if she was my mother we would never get along because people like her y'all people like her just like parents like her and people like her that try to be controlling. Like, I'm not one to be controlled. I'm not the one. So, we would bump heads all the time. I was like, yo, I'm so glad. I, like, I could not have her as a parent because we would be bumping heads. Like, we're not going to get along if you think that you're about to mind control me like this. The way she just did Kane. And Kane is so weak-minded. Like, I'm just like, ugh, like bro you're unstable your dependency on your mom is just make having you out here looking so unstable but um and what i want to say yeah when then then kane was like ain't that what you wanted me to do after he beat up the dude and i was just like why are you asking your mom for approval like ain't that's what you you know he's still seeking approval from his mom but y'all y'all already know the deal and it's just like i feel that kane feels like he's the man he he's his mom's man now like that's how he is acting since his dad is locked up so he's like he's stepping up and he's the man so even when he confronted his mom and was like, you know, you made that decision about the JTD boys without me. I thought we was a team, you know? I was like, oh, see, that's him thinking that him and his mom are like a couple, like they together and he the man now when really he isn't. And she had to put him back in his place. But I was like, this is going to really mess with him because remember when um, the cop had came over? to see Monet and she, you know, the cop that she's sleeping with and Kane seen him and he got mad and rolled off and she was like, you gotta hurry up before Kane come back because Kane is real protective over Monet. And it's a weird relationship, y'all, because Kane has now stepped up to be the man in her life and he's not used to seeing her with any other man. So if another man comes around, he's gonna feel like 
that man is stepping, you know, over into his territory. So, I feel like that's how he's going to feel when he finds out that his mom is, um, you know, Monet is sleeping with, um, with the cop. He's going to feel betrayed because he feels like he's the man of the house right now. So, y'all, we shall see. I don't know. I think it's only five episodes this season. Then we're going on, like, some type of break, but we'll see. And, um... So, y'all, I hate Davis McLean's suits. Like, what was the budget? Like, did y'all spend the whole entire budget on seasons one through six on Ghosts and James St. Patrick's suits? Like, Omari Hardwick, did y'all spend? <laughs> because I hate his outfits, y'all. Like, I'm like, you charging Tariq a half million dollars to represent his mother, and your outfits look like they came from... What is that store that um Steve Harvey sells suits from? <laughs> that store. K and G, D and K, whatever that cheap, ugly store is. That's where it looked like those suits are coming from. And I'm just so mad. Like, could y'all go get uh, uh James suits and give them to him like y'all y'all really is slipping on this season like quit playing with me like what is going on between his suits and these weak ass sex scenes I'm over it y'all like I'm almost ready to throw the whole show away but it's still interesting so I'm still here like the need to know what's next just has me here glued to the tv every Sunday like I'm kind of not even as anxious to see the next episode as I was to see this episode. This episode, for some reason, I was like, I can't wait to see it. But after seeing this episode, next week's episode, I'm kind of like, okay, Sunday will get here when it gets here. But last week, I was like, where is Sunday? This week, I was just, I'm just kind of, I'm chilling. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Okay, y'all. <laughs> Back to business. So, how many of y'all knew Dre was drunk? How many of y'all knew that Drew was gay? How am I about to go to yoga like this? Let me quit playing. How many of y'all knew that Drew was gay from episode one? Like, I knew when he gave Tariq up, when he was talking about the art, I knew he was gay. I was like... I had a feeling I said, you know what, I, I believe that he's gay. But I said I wasn't going to say it in my recap because I was like, I don't want to be that person that whenever I see a black man into arts, I feel like that's labeled as gay because I, for some reason I'm attracted to men that are artists. Except for my baby daddy, he's like a rapper and that doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm dry. No. <laughs> but, um, no. Like, for some reason, like, I feel like artists, men who are artists tend to be a little bit more sensual, a little bit more in tune with their feelings, a little more emotional. And that's kind of the vibe that I wanted from Drew. I didn't want to label it as gay. So I didn't label him as gay, even though my gaydar was up with him. I was like, yo, this dude is gay. But then I was like, no, I like him. Let's not make him gay just yet. I was like, I'm not going to make him gay. I'm not going to say that on my um, recap. And then this episode, he is so gay. I was like, oh my God, come on, y'all. Don't make him gay. Everybody's gay. I was like, oh, everybody's gay now. So, yeah, but y'all, I couldn't, I was like, hmm. Anyways, when Paula says that she can help Tariq and he says, um, no one can help me. I was like, okay. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Like, I, am I reading too much into that part, y'all? Or like, what did he mean by that? Did he mean something by that? He meant something by that. He was like, no one can help me. Like, bro, like, whoa. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're doomed? Or like... You know, Tariq lives for this street life. Like, he wanted this. This is this is what he lives for. This is what he wanted. Even when his dad tried to steer him away from this, he was like, no, this is who I am. This is who I'm going to be. It's in me. So when he said no one can help me, I was like, is that what he meant? Like, this is what he's doing is what he wanted to be doing. This is what he was raised for. Like, 
You know, he said that he's the manifestation of what his father can never be. So, look, you know, okay. No one can help you. But um, Paula's intuition is screaming run. Like, she, Paula's intuition is like, let me get out of here. Like, I can't. This is not working out, y'all. I'm telling you something is up. And Davis is just like, oh, no, we get into the money. Davis is just so ghetto, y'all. <laughs> His character is a little bit ghetto, but whatever. And um, so, y'all, that scene where Tate was in there talking to um, went to the judge and he was being cross-examined between sex and davis i was like look at tate tate is always in character y'all tate don't be missing a beat <laughs> even when um at the end of the uh exam the cross examination um davis was like you a lying ass nigga tate was like and i hope that i can get the same support from you one day i was like look look at him he stay in character tate is a fool like he is hilarious but um when I was surprised that, like, I'm like, in that part where Tate was being cross-examined, I was surprised that he was able to give more information than what was asked versus just having to say yes or no, like how they did Ro Blan Ro Blan Rodriguez, Blanco Rodriguez, how they did her. They just made her do a yes and a no. They was like, don't give us no extra information. We ask you for all that. But with Tate, Tate was like, oh, but I forgot to mention that Tasha came by and said and threatened me. But when Blanc Rodriguez was trying to give some information, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We didn't ask you that. We asked you a yes or no question. So I was kind of surprised that um, Davis didn't stop that because, you know, Sax would have been like, oh, no, we didn't. No, 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 no. So, yeah, I was surprised. But, um yeah, I wrote down Tate is always in character and um, it's just hilarious. So let's go on to the next scene where Monet knows that Drew is gay. And um, I think it worries her, you know, like she knows that they're in living in this world and she's like, I know that you're gay, but home is where the heart is. I'm going to always love you regardless, no matter what anybody else thinks of you. That's basically what she was telling him as he was washing up, you know, in the shower. And I was just like, oh, okay. So, Lauren's parents are shady as fuck. I wrote that down. Y'all seen the shade. Y'all heard the shade. I was here for it. I was sitting there drinking my wine like, oh. I was like, yep, his parents are a mess. <laughs> when his dad was like, yeah, we've been following your, um, your mom's case. I was like, oh, yeah, y'all have. Did y'all see her in those braids? She, she's a hot mess. So, um, y'all, did y'all see her doing those push-ups? <laughs> did y'all see her? I was about to cry. <laughs> when she was, she was in her, uh, I was like, girl, you just in jail. You're not even in prison. Like, calm down. What are you? <laughs> she was doing push-ups in case that lady guard tried to get her. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> she, was, she did like two and a half push-ups. I, I was like, yo, I was laughing so hard. That shit tickled me like... <laughs> But, um, what did Carrie mean when she said that, so Jabari says that Ka that Carrie knows Davis some type of way. So I guess maybe she been, she was sleeping around with him or something. But I was like, no, Carrie can't be Davis's, um, wife because after, um, Davis got down having sex with Paula, he said, um, she said that, um, you want to get your ring before, um, dang, I didn't write down the girl's name. But she said somebody's name and it wasn't Carrie. It wasn't Carrie. So, I don't know who Davis is married to, but Davis is married because he had to put his ring back on after he got done cheating. Because niggas ain't shit, of course. <sighs> Some niggas ain't shit before y'all getting y'all feelings in my comments but um 
yeah um what did what is carrie's relationship to davis i'm i'm curious to know and what did carrie mean when she said that davis um a win for davis when she told tariq to be careful with davis when she said a win for davis isn't always um a win for his clients and i was like hmm okay what does that mean because davis does kind of seem like the type where he's motivated by the need to win so and then he's also motivated by the money so because he's ignoring paula paula he's like girl we getting this money i'm not worried about none of that and paula's like why well, am worried you know so um you know that just goes to show us that we still need to know more about davis and i'm i want to know more about davis i don't want to know more about his sex life because we'll get to that part but um jabari and carrie was throwing shots all throughout y'all they were sitting there throwing shots after shots like i was sitting there watching them at the table like i was right there i was like yeah and when she was like um yeah his, his book his second book already came and gone i was like yo you're mad like why are you so mad carrie but I knew that that whole little scene right there, I knew that was a setup for the weak ass sex scene that came next. Like, I was like, ugh, like y'all are so dramatic. Like, why y'all just can't be together? Why y'all gotta slap each other around and have sex? Like, it was just like horrible. The sex scene was horrible. Like, you did all that aggressiveness just to have that weak sex scene. Like, throw the whole sex scene away, period. But the way Tariq curved um, Relly in the next scene when um i call her really did i write down really i meant riley or am i just drunk right now <laughs> when riley was i'm not even drunk y'all let me quit playing i'm i'm feeling it a little bit i ain't even gonna lie i'm a little bit tipsy but i'm not drunk i know what's going on i could still probably drive a car but um the way Tariq curved Riley was just hilarious. She was like you know you have a dark energy around you has anyone ever told you that <laughs> Tariq was like uh no no and walked away i was like oh wow <laughs> i ain't never been curved that hard <laughs> but um yeah and then um it was just hilarious and the way that Tariq thought he was doing something when he set up um brayden and the other drug dealing guy i don't i don't know his name i don't remember but um when he was standing upstairs so Tariq was looking down on everybody the whole season did y'all notice that like when he ran up the stairs in Stanford and was looking down on people and then um when he also was looking down at the party after he caused that little scene I was like what does he think he is really power tripping right now you are on one you need to humble yourself bruh but yeah and um so back now we're at Davis and Paula's sex scene okay it, it almost made me throw up a little bit. I almost threw up a little bit because I was just like, get. <laughs> like, especially that part when they show his butt. I was like, oh. Like, I just started laughing. Like, it was just hilarious. Like, you're really in here trying to. Like, it was almost like a make love scene is what they were attempting. He was actually, like, making love to Paula, which I feel like is really dangerous because having sex like that with somebody that you're not with can like in a relationship with and especially when you're committed to somebody else because he's married can cause problems like you think paula just taking that dick like that and she's not catching feelings like you're kissing all on her neck y'all slow sex and y'all making love at this point but um y'all when he stood up to put on his pants and he looked at her and was <laughs> he was talking to her i was like oh oh Jesus, I was like, take it out, take this sight out of my mind because it really just looked like somebody's dad. I was like, oh, she just had sex with somebody's dad. Mm. Not somebody's son, somebody's dad. Come get him. Come get your dad. But um, yeah, that um, they was trying to make love. He was really trying to make love to that woman, knowing they ain't together. And then um, when he's, when she starts talking about the case, when she got that text message or the money wire, and she was like, yeah, we got a money wire from a shady LLC. He was like, well, I must not be doing my job if you, good if you can concentrate on that. And I was like, no, you're not, sir. Get, <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, like, get off of me. Get away from me. Like, no, you're not. Like, y'all could have kept this part of the, 
Y'all could have kept this part of the show because I can't. I can't. But, um... Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think her name is Marilyn or something. Yeah, because I brought down poor Marilyn. Niggas ain't shit. <laughs> I think she said, get your, room be get your ring because Marilyn would notice. And I was like, who is Marilyn? And then I put, yeah, I wrote down poor Marilyn. Niggas ain't shit. But yeah, just before y'all go off in my comments about me saying niggas ain't shit. If you're one of the niggas that is some shit, then just, just know that I'm not talking to you. Just, just pipe down. Just like the video if you not one of those niggas that ain't shit. How about that? <laughs> but um, when Tariq says, why are you still all the... Uh, oh, yeah, y'all. This is the part that did kind of turn me on, y'all. Out of all the scenes in this episode, including the sex scenes, is the part... This is the one that did turn me on. And I'm not even attracted to Tariq. But when Lauren came into the classroom and sat down on the other side of the room and then Tariq gets up and gets his stuff and sits down and was like why are you sitting all the way over here I ain't even tripping about last night I was like okay come on with it with your grown self okay young man come talk to me like a grown man talk to me nice so um yeah I was like okay you know he came and told her what was up and that's you know, it was a turn on for me he was like look we both young we both out here doing what he do we got options we keeping our options open. It ain't no thing. You ain't even got a trip, shorty. I was like, okay. Okay. Yes. I'm here for it. But, um, yeah, y'all. But, um, that's about the end of the episode. That's about everything that happened. This recap about to be like 30 minutes. So, I hope y'all watch to the end. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, y'all. I'm not about to be getting tipsy on my recaps it's just that i'm getting ready to go to yoga and i like to feel good i'm gonna drink some water when i get to yoga so i'm drink this then i'm gonna go to my yoga class i'm gonna be drinking water in there and just stretching or whatever but um yeah y'all let me get out of here because yeah it's about time for me to go i'm probably over my time you know, when you having fun, you lose track of time. But, um, yeah, at this point, I'm just talking. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to see y'all on the next vlog. Y'all be easy. It's been real. Peace. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>